Welcome to our series, Fine Poetry. Poems that touch deeper chords. Today, the poetry of Henry Van Dyke, 1882-1933. Van Dyke was a friend of Helen Keller. Keller wrote, Dr. Van Dyke is the kind of a friend to have when one is up against a difficult problem. He will take trouble, days and nights of trouble, if it is for somebody else or for some cause he is interested in. I am not an optimist, says Dr. Van Dyke. There's too much evil in the world and in me. Nor am I a pessimist. There is too much good in the world and in God. So I am just a meliorist, believing that he wills to make the world better and trying to do my bit to help and wishing that it were more. Time is. Time is too slow for those who wait, too swift for those who fear, too long for those who grieve, too short for those who rejoice. But for those who love, time is not. This is perhaps his most famous poem and was read at Princess Diana's funeral. Twilight in the Alps. I love the hour that comes with dusky hair and dewy feet along the alpine dells to lead the cattle forth. A thousand bells go chiming after her across the fair and flowering uplands where the rosy flare of sunset on the snowy mountain dwells and valleys darken and the drowsy spells of peace are woven through the purple air. Dear is the magic of this hour. She seems to walk before the dark by falling rills and lend a sweeter song to hidden streams. She opens all the doors of night and fills with moving bells the music of my dreams that wander far among the sleeping hills. Reliance, not to the swift the race, not to the strong the fight, not to the righteous, perfect grace, not to the wise, the light, but often faltering feet come surest to the goal. And they who walk in darkness meet the sunrise of the soul. A thousand times by night, the Syrian hosts have died. A thousand times the vanquished right hath risen glorified. Stars and the Soul to Charles A. Young, astronomer. Two things, the wise man said, fill me with awe the starry heavens 
and the moral law. Nay, add another wonder to thy role, the living marvel of the human soul. Born in the dust and cradled in the dark, it feels the fire of an immortal spark and learns to read with patient, searching eyes the splendid secret of unconscious skies. For God thought light before he spoke the word. The darkness understood not, though it heard. But man looks up to where the planets swim and thinks God's thoughts of glory after him. What knows the star that guides the sailor's way or lights the lover's bower with liquid ray of toil and passion, danger and distress, brave hope, true love and utter faithfulness? But human hearts that suffer good and ill and hold to virtue with a loyal will adorn the law that rules our mortal strife with star-surpassing victories of life. So take our thanks, dear reader of the skies, devout astronomer, most humbly wise, for lessons brighter than the stars can give and inward light that helps us all to live. The world has brought the laurel leaves to crown the star discoverer's name with high renown. Accept the flower of love we lay with these for influence sweeter than the Pleiades. The Heavenly Hills of Holland. The Heavenly Hills of Holland, how wondrously they rise above the smooth green pastures into the azure skies with blue and purple hollows with peaks of dazzling snow along the far horizon the clouds are marching slow no mortal foot has trodden the summits of that range nor walked those mystic valleys whose colors ever change. Yet we possess their beauty and visit them in dreams, while the ruddy gold of sunset from cliff and canyon gleams. In days of cloudless weather, they melt into the light when fog and mist surround us they're hidden from our sight. But when returns a season, clear shining after rain, while the northwest wind is blowing, we see the hills again. The old Dutch painters love them. Their pictures show them clear. Old Hobema and Ruisdale, Van Goyen and Vermeer. Above the level landscape, rich polders, long armed mills, canals, and ancient cities float Holland's heavenly hills. And the last poem of only four lines. The Mockingbird. In mirth 
He mocks the other birds at noon, catching the lilt of every easy tune. But when the day departs, he sings of love, his own wild song beneath the listening moon.